pretty cool. All right, here we go. So this is an important concept. There's two things we talk about all year, forces of attraction and bonds. What's the difference? What's stronger, do you think? Forces of attraction. Bonds. Well, no. It's one or the other. Depends on the kind of bond. Okay, uh, I'll give you a, here you go, I'm gonna help you out, okay? So I'm gonna space these out just so we can uh, see a little bit easier what I'm doing here. They're like stars or something. All right, um, okay. So I'm gonna draw a dotted line between these. The dotted lines represent forces. Bonds. Okay. Yeah. The bonds are between these two. So uh, another analogy is uh, if you're attracted to someone or they're attracted to you, okay, that's like, all right, don't make it weird, but let's say Tyler and I are attracted to each other, right? Whoa. So so right it's between weird. us, okay, you can feel attraction, like in your brain, in your heart, if you want to go down that path. Okay? <laughs> all right, I'm it's not going to, I'm not going to go, I'm not going go, to go there, don't okay? Don't go there. Don't go just, just stay, stay with me. All right, you can feel it, but it's not something physical you can grab, right? right. But the bonds, so that's like an attraction between us, can't see it, can't feel it, okay? <laughs> but bonds are actually in our bodies, holding our bodies together. So our arms, legs, head, our bones, everything's attached because the bond's inside us. That's the analogy I use. So what's stronger? Bonds. 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 Way stronger. Okay? Another analogy I use. Shake my hand. Okay, if we shake hand, this is like a force. We can just let go. Forces can be let go, can be broken, and form pretty easily. Okay? I can't rip the arm off his body. He can't rip my arm off my body. No. That would be breaking a bond. So it's a weird analogy, but it's really to help you understand bonds are what hold our bodies together. So that's between these two, right? So NaCl, there's a bond here. Between two NaCl, that's like a handshake, you can break that really easily, and now you can have a, a liquid or a gas, okay? So I'm just trying to really emphasize that forces are a lot weaker than, whoops, forces are a lot weaker than bonds, all right? Bonds are what hold molecules together. That's a molecule, by the way, two atoms. Um, so that is a bond between them, but between two molecules, that's a force. So that's an important concept. We're going to use it all year. So anyways, that's why the second picture is a, fit, or a chemical change, because you are breaking those bonds. Okay? Anytime you break bonds, it's chemical. You break forces, it's physical. Another way, I'll, I know I'm beating this to death, but Another example, okay, if we're holding hands or shaking hands, whatever, is he still Silas? Yes. Am I still yes. Mr. McCoy? Yes. yes. We let go, are we still the same people? Yes. Yeah, our composition doesn't change. Mikhailis. Okay? Mikhailis. <laughs> <laughs> Mikhailis. Uh, okay. Ooh, so, uh, anyways, <laughs> the, the point is that the force doesn't change the composition, right? So when you break forces, composition doesn't change. That, that's where I'm going with that. All right, moving on. 43, I'm going to just answer these to move on. Breaking a pencil, physical. Water freezing, physical. Frying an egg, chemical. Burning wood, chemical. Leaves changing colors, chemical. I was just talking to my daughter about that the other day. I was telling her, that's a chemical change. because it's Why is it chemical? How do we know? Because color change. Color change, good. What's the leaf, what have the leaves lost? Chlorophyll. Chlorophyll, chlorophyll right? Chlor chlorophyll, chlor yeah. chloroplasts. They can't do what now? Photosynthesis. Right, can't do photosynthesis. So there's a chemical change there. Okay? There's a chemical change there. So yeah, she's not even three yet, so I tell her this and she's just like red, it's orange, you know, she's she knows colors. I try and get her I was talking about density too. She put an acorn in our water table and the acorn floats floats and I said, Oh, do you know why it floats? And she's just staring at me and I'm like, It's less dense, the particles are more spread out. <laughs> and she's just splashing in the water. <laughs> like whatever trying to eat sand so <laughs> I'm just I'm gonna stay on her all the time and then hopefully she she's gets older get like a hundred on the chemistry. Oh, no, she's probably gonna hate yeah. chemistry hate science and hate bass she's probably gonna hate everything I like just because I'm always talking about it so I feel like with kids and parents sometimes that's it's either you, you, you like your parents or you hate it right so as long as I don't push it right I just got to be like casual about it kind of make it that's right. Make it, and I was. I was saying, see, it floats. And she was like, yeah. <laughs> so, all right, here we go. Moving on. Uh, I could talk all day about that. Uh, 44, ripening bananas. What do you guys think? Physical. Physical. If you take a banana and put it on the table, 
and leave it here oh, for a month. Leave, oh, you've left it there. That's a chemical because the sugar is like coming out. Right. What's going to happen to it? It gets out. Yep. It'll go from... the sugar. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. The longer it ripens, right. the more no. sugar is produced. Yes. So that's a chemical change. And eventually the banana will decompose completely. It also gives off gases. Um, let's see. Where the heck am I here? Uh, 45. Uh, change in phase, that's what I was talking about here, is physical, okay? When you separate particles, the composition stays the same, you're just breaking those forces, so it's physical, not breaking bonds. Uh, four indicators of a chemical change, yell them out. Rust. Color change. Color order. Order change. Rust. Color change. Rust is color change. Heat given off. Heat given off. Yeah. New substance. Fire, new substance. Light given Gas. off. Gas. Yeah. Anyone say solid? Solid produced, precipitate produced. I think we got them all. Light, fire. Okay, good. Uh, is that it for that page? Yeah, 98. Page 98, number four. C. C. C, yes, that was the demo. That's exactly what the demo um, was. You, you're sucking out the water uh, vapor as steam, and you're left over with just carbon. And then number five, it is? D. D, yes. All right, put them back carefully. What about 99? Sorry. 99, 16. All right, difference between chemical and physical change. Chemical, you're changing the composition. Physical, you are not changing the composition. That's the easiest way to explain it. And last one, combustion of gas, chemical or physical? Chemical. Chemical, but why? How do you know? Different. It's a new combustion. Combustion. Fire. There's heat produced. There's fire. Also, combustion. All right. It is. Hold on a second. Don't move. Everything else. What? happens if you, okay, so you put gas in the gas tank, drive your car or truck, if you don't put more gas in, what's going to happen? It's going to run out. Right, you're going to run out of gas because where did the gas go? It burned. And what it, what was it converted into? Gas. Energy. Energy, energy and the gas. what goes into the environment? The Pollution. Pollu right, Air. but what is it? Air. Compounds. CO2. Carbon, Carbon dioxide. Oh, yeah. Okay, what else comes out tailpipe? Oxygen. Not no. oxygen. <laughs> Nitrogen. I don't know. Nitrogen <laughs> compounds. Nitrogen compounds like nitrogen dioxide. And actually something that is good for us. Oh, we can drink it. H2O. H2O. Water. Water comes out. Water. Water. Yeah. Oh, water. And, and <laughs> another carbon <laughs> oxygen compound that's much worse for us than CO2. Carbon, carbon monoxide. Yes. All right. You can put the books back. Put them back order, you know, in an ordered fashion. Low entropy, please. Oh, oh boy. Low entropy. Uh, I don't think I can do that, David. Sure. Boy. Usually it takes one or two people to take control over there and figure it out. All right. Uh, no, take your notes out. Oh, I thought we were done looking at stuff. We are, but I got to give you some notes first. Corey, don't like that. Just throw When we have 28 again, right? I'll eventually give you six. All right, 28. I remember because that's what I like lunch this period last year. Yeah, I remember it was lunch ended. Yeah, see, my schedule was a little different, so I. All right, here we go. So we're gonna take a bunch of notes here in the next uh, five, ten minutes tops, and then I'll go back to Stop saying that. You got it. Stop. Put it in. Stop. Matter. Here we go. Uh, Two types of matter. Historical. Yep. Two types of matter. Please subscribe to my channel. What are the two types of matter? Renee, Renee knows. What? What are the two types of matter? Oh, is it that? Yep. Solution and mixture. Okay, mixtures. Mixtures is one type of matter. Mixtures. And the other, like the S. Solution. Oh, Solvents. Substance. Substance. That's it. Now, we use the word, everybody, including myself, uh, even though I teach this stuff, will use the word substance incorrectly. Okay? A substance is technically only an element or compound. Okay? A lot of people, you know, like at a crime scene, and let's say there were drugs at the crime scene, and they might describe like a white powder as a substance. Probably a mixture, actually. Okay, because a lot of even a lot of drugs, unless it's in a lab um, or medication, people take a lot of them are, are not pure. 
Okay, so um, so I'm just throwing that out there because that's where the word substance would be used by someone who doesn't know what a white powder is or at a crime scene or something. So substance really is an element or a compound. And now both of these, I should have wrote this here, sorry. Um, so we can kind of just do this, sorry. Substances have uniform composition. So both elements and compounds have uniform composition. I'm sorry, I didn't write that very well. Um, so I'm gonna give you some notes on elements and compounds, and then we'll talk about the two types of mixtures. I'll go back and show you these things, and then you have this worksheet. <coughs> Somewhere, it's over there. We're home. All right, so let's talk about the word uniform. What does it mean? One. One. Mm, give me another specific. Same or different? I guess. Same. Same, correct. Same. Uh, schools that make kids wear uniforms. uniforms is so all the kids look kind of the same, right? That's, that's their logic there. So, or think of military or police. Or you, like, you want police to all look the same or because then you can identify them, right? Sports. So, or sports, right. <laughs> Obviously, if you're playing, you know, let's say basketball, for example, you can't have 10 people wearing 10 different things and that would be crazy. Be so, oh, um, if you have two teams wearing the same color, well, right, oh God, right. So that's that's the point I'm trying to make. So, um, uniform <laughs> means the same, right? Uh, composition is what it's made of, right? So, how does this apply here? So, first of all, what do you guys know about elements? There's. I'll, I'll lead you in the right direction. They are the simplest. They're right there. They're right there. The simplest. And periodic table. Blank of matter. Form. Simplest form. form. Simplest form mm -hmm. of matter. You can't have any. You can't have any matter smaller than an element. Simplest form of matter. So if you have one atom, let's say I had a sheet of copper up here, and I somehow could break off individual atoms. I couldn't. But I gave everybody an atom of copper. We're all holding an atom of copper. We're holding the simplest form of matter. You can't say, wait a second, particle accelerators. I know what that is. They smash atoms together. The atoms break apart. Yes. But when those atoms break apart, they're not atoms. Right. They're protons, neutrons, electrons, and energy. They actually turn into energy. That's called nuclear chemistry. So that's not a form of matter. So the simplest form of matter is one atom of one element. Okay? So that, that's uh, important to remember. Compounds are not the simplest form. Why? What are they made of? They're multiple put together. Yeah, they're made of, so they're uh, made up of, made up of two or more elements chemically combined. You can't just physically mix them. You can't take, like the air. You have oxygen and nitrogen mixing in the air. They don't just spontaneously make compounds and compounds drop out of the air and hit us in the head, all right? So if that doesn't just work. You need to uh, mix them, chemically react them, right? Make up, made up of two or more elements chemically combined. So that's, that's important to remember. Um, that compounds are made up of elements, I think you already know that, but they're put together chemically, which means you have to separate them chemically. I'll come back to that. Uh, elements, simplest form of matter, cannot be broken down. And again, yes, you can break an atom down, but it's no longer matter. So that's what that means. You can't break it down into anything uh, simpler in terms of the definition of matter. It has mass, it takes up space. Compounds can be broken down. Why does that make sense? Because they can be combined. Right. Think of like bricks in a house, right? You made a brick house. Just picture each brick is an element. So you have all these bricks that make up a house. You could take it apart brick by brick. Theoretically, it would be hard. And that, that's the analogy there, okay? That you can uh, break these apart because they're made of these, right? So you can chemically separate compounds. Can chemically separate slash breakdown. Is it making sense so far? Yeah. Why in like most things, elements are more considered like fire, earth, water, and air? Uh, that's just a different fire. use of the word element, I guess. You're talking about like the elements of life, kind of how people use that phrase or What's that? Is it Yes. So, 
it's just a different use of the Oh, it just popped my head, like fire, air, air water. Yeah. So I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know why there's different names. But it's just a different, different use of that term. That's my question. All right, here we go. Uh, simplest form of matter cannot be broken down. All atoms are identical. All atoms are identical. And when I write that, what I mean is, yeah, individually. So if, uh, if Freddie has uh, an atom or a, a chunk of silver, and Alex has a chunk of platinum, and Rebecca has a chunk of, I don't know, zinc. Let's get that gold. Okay, you have gold. Sure, whatever, okay? Um, if we all have our own individual piece of one of these elements, all the atoms in there, so there's like trillions of them, all those atoms of your sample are identical to all the other ones in your sample. Okay, why? So let's use uh, zinc as an example. Zinc is number 30. Every single atom of zinc has 30 protons, so they all have the same properties, right? All atoms are identical. They have the same <coughs> number of protons. The only way to change the protons is to smash it in a particle accelerator and then you don't have an element anymore, you have energy. So there's really no way to get anything more simple than the atom of an element. I just keep repeating myself just a little different just so you understand it. All right, so compounds are made of elements so you can break them down. Uh, elements are the simplest, cannot be broken down, all the atoms are identical. Over here, <coughs> all the molecules are identical. You guys lie. You guys lie not Tyler. No. You better not be, because I'll be. The one behind me. Alright, well, Jake, whatever you're doing, stop it. <laughs> I literally sniffed. Alright, now, <laughs> so stay with me. Stay focused. Stay focused. All the molecules, in other words, back to the magnets here. Right. So, alright, if this was in our analogy, this was uh, sodium, right? We had NaCl as the red and the blue. So if I have two reds, those are like two atoms of sodium. These are identical to each other in all ways. That's what I'm talking about over here. If I take a Cl and put it with an Na, that's your NaCl. Well, if I have a whole bucket full of salt, so I have this repeating trillions of times, every single molecule, which is two atoms, is identical. So this and that mean the same thing, except with the elements, the simplest part is an atom compounds, the simplest part is at least two atoms, because that makes a compound. You guys following me? I'm going yeah. a little fast. But. So the point is, compounds are uniform. Every piece of salt looks the same. Every piece of sodium looks the same. That's what this means for, for elements, too. Okay. So some of these are similar, but then the big difference is you can separate compounds, chemically, elements, you cannot. Okay. Um, I think that's it for elements and compounds for now. Hold on, I don't want to forget something. I gotta have to look at my notes once in a while. All right, okay. Um, give me a word for breaking down something chemically. Um, or we'll kind of just break down and go back in. Decomposition, good. I was just saying, that's great. Good, decomposition. There's another word, another uh, term called electrolysis, which is different. Heard that word before? Like no, possibly. possibly. We'll talk about that uh, more tomorrow. All right. Um, okay. There's two types of mixtures. Hold on, I just want to make sure. Yeah, that's good for now for those. Two types of mixtures. Homogeneous. It's the last thing. Then we're gonna go in the back. Homogeneous and heterogeneous. Homogeneous and heterogeneous. If you know what the prefix homo means, the prefix hetero means. Different. Yeah, same and different. It'll help you understand what's going on back there. Okay, so when you wrote those, once you get those.